All right, ladies and gents, welcome to this video. My name is Taylor Bentard, and we're gonna talk about moving slash living in Panama City, Panama, okay? This is, right now I'm on the balcony, but I wanted to make this video because many people have asked me, why did I move here? What are the pros, what are the cons? Primarily, I moved here for taxes and weather, and we're gonna get into you know, what the taxes are like, given I'm a Canadian, and what the weather's like, but more importantly, you know, cost of living, um, how much I spend per month living here, just what I like about living here, what I don't like about living here, and all of that stuff. So a huge rant on personal life stuff that's not super beneficial for your agency or your business unless you're thinking about actually moving here and taking your corporation here, depending on if you're not a US citizen. So let's get straight into that. All right. All right, ladies and gents, let's get straight into the pros and cons of living here. So I got this mini list here on the list. Number one for a pro, an extreme benefit is cheap labor. So you can get a maid to come here and clean your house for eight hours, like the full day, for 20 to $25. And that's like good, okay? You're paying them pretty well if you pay them 20 to $25 for the day. And uh, you can hire that maid full time, five days a week, or potentially more for four to $500 uh, full time, again, depending on the person that you find. Uh, and then also just like chef, you can hire a chef for 400 to $500 per month. They can cook you uh, meals for six days a week, lunch and dinner. Uh, that's how we have it set up right now. You can get a personal trainer. All these things are cheap because labor here is cheap and that's a huge pro. Getting a chef, getting a maid, getting a personal trainer, these are three huge W's, huge wins that are gonna be able to give you more energy, more time, more focus on your agency. It's gonna help you grow your business, all right? So that's that's amazing, that's a huge pro. Even if you don't have a business, that's an amazing, amazing thing to have. The number two is the taxes here are very different. Now, it depends on where you're from. I'm Canadian, okay? So keep in mind that Canada, the CRA operates in a way where once you become a non-resident of Canada, you are basically not within uh, the tax laws and you're, you're not taxed on income, okay? You have to go through a certain process and I recommend you talk to a lawyer before you go through that process if you're a Canadian watching this video. However, uh, you don't need to pay taxes once you become a non-resident of Canada, assuming you've gone through the, the process properly. Now, in Panama, the taxes are, are great because given that I, I don't have to pay Canadian tax once I've left and become a non-resident, Panama only charges tax on income that is sourced from within Panama. So we have, uh, in our agency, our revenue last month was about 94000 and all of that revenue came from sources outside of Panama. So we don't have any clients within Panama City or just Panama, the country in general. Now, if we did have clients that were paying us or any source of income that came from within the country itself, we would pay a tax. Since it's from outside the country, we don't have to pay tax on that. Now, there's I could make a whole other video on how that actually works because it's kind of a gray, there's this gray area which people don't fully understand. People think that they can just come here and be tax-free. It's not really how it works. There's a way that you have to operate your business to be able to be exempt from tax uh, on income that comes from outside of Panama. So taxes are amazing. Now, I, I'm not an expert on the personal tax laws, but from what I understand, it's not, it's not different, and uh, that's more or less just the conclusion I got from the law firm when I was speaking with them and I was talking to them about that. So personal taxes is zero and the uh, tax on income on, on corporate is pretty much also zero, assuming the income is sourced from outside of the country. So that's obviously a huge benefit. Number three on the list here, I better hold it up because I'm kind of looking down at the desk. Number three is, uh, weird, I can't even read that. It says, oh yeah, sorry, time zone. So. Time zone is obviously close to it's it's right now it's EST I think and it fluctuates it's called it's actually Bogota time but right now it's 5 p.m. on a Wednesday and I think it's the same as EST it fluctuates between I think daylight savings is coming up and uh, when it goes to daylight savings the time zone changes to CST so it's a it's an amazing time zone similar to the US and uh, you also have US dollar here which is a huge benefit that's the next benefit on the list the Panamanian Balboa which is their currency is pegged to the US dollar. So no, there, there isn't really any transactions that happen in Panamanian currency. Everyone uses US dollar here. They have a few coins, like Panamanian coins, um, but that's it. Uh, the, aside from the coins and the change here, all the bills are, are done in you know US dollar. So everything is USD, which is obviously a huge win for Americans um, or even Canadians that wanna come down here. So. That's great. Um, those are pretty much the major pros that I would say 
that come out of living in Panama, okay? If anything else comes to me, I'll, I'll definitely let you know. But the cons are that Spanish is kind of important. Um, not that many people here actually speak English. Sp some people will tell you otherwise. Look, I've been here for four years, and I'm going to tell you that not that many people here speak English. They don't speak that good English. And that means the waiters. That means, like, people who are going to be cutting your hair. That means, like, you know, just anybody, anywhere, pretty much in general, doesn't speak much English. Now, it depends on where you are. Obviously, you can find people that speak English. Like, after living here for two, three years, I built up a community of people, and they all speak perfect English, and they're all Panamanian. I mean, it's, yeah, it just takes time to be able to find those people. Especially, like, finding a hairstylist or finding, like, a personal trainer or finding a chef and finding all these people and a maid. Our maid doesn't speak English, but that's okay. Anyways, Spanish is a con. If you don't speak the language, I can speak decent Spanish. It's not that hard to pick up, so Spanish. You need to kind of learn some Spanish. The Wi-Fi is only one gigabyte. Um, it doesn't go faster than that, which you might not think that's a con, but, man, in, like, New York and San Francisco and... You can get up to like 10 gigabytes now or something like that. It's it's insane. Uh, commonly, people pay for like 50 to 100 megabytes per second here, but we have 600 megabytes per second in our building. We can't get one gigabyte. That's kind of a con that is on my list if you're operating off of the internet for your business, okay? So service here sucks. That's another con that we're going to talk about. Waiters, I mean, just like when you go to like the, the place to go uh, fix, if you're going to like... I don't know, let's say subscribe to a telecommunications company like to get 3G on your phone. I had to go to this place because the, the COVID-19, the website got shut down. I had to like rehook up the credit card. I mean, they're, they're just not happy to, to see you. They don't want to help you, but they have to because it's their job. That's kind of like the mentality and the approach. Whereas in the United States, like people's service is taken very seriously and it's very important. Here, not so much. And people aren't going to be that friendly to service you, especially even like the waiters and whatnot. Just in general, things move very slow here, like very, very slow. So if I have a meeting with the bank at 2 p.m., I mean, that meeting probably won't start till 2.30 or 3. Like, that's not, that's regular. If I send an email to, to my banker and I, and I say, hey, I, I need to get this document, I might have to follow up literally three times just to, like, get a hold of this person and get the document. And that's a bank, okay? So that's the level of service that you're dealing with in Panama. Everything moves so slow. It's commonly known as Panama time, okay? And it's similar in uh, other places I've heard, like Colombia, Medellin, and Bogota, and other places. So I don't think it's that different the further south uh, you go. Now, the last thing, last couple things on the list, the, the country is really small. The Panama City is really small. You can drive around Panama City in like an hour with no traffic. I mean, you can like literally do a loop around Panama City. It's tiny. Uh, I pretty much, I think I showed it earlier in the beginning of this video. That's pretty much most of Panama City. You're missing the left side of my balcony, but there's not a whole lot more. Now, uh, obviously you can go outside of Panama City, but there's not really too many places to go to. We just got back from Bogus del Toro, which is like the number one travel destination outside of the city. And there's of course other places, but um, you have Boquete, you have Bocas del Toro, you have like uh, Playa Venal, you have some beaches, but it's small. I mean, you can cover the whole territory in probably one, two years of living here. Last on the list is it's not very cheap. You know, it's not like Colombia. It's not like other places in, in South America. Uh, Panama City is very much pretty expensive. Um, let's get into, on that note, let's actually get into the cost of living here. So cost of living in this place, and I'm going to probably put a video here that'll show you as I'm speaking the office and then like the kitchen and living room area. The cost of living in this house is $2,500 per month. That's the rent. It is un It came unfurnished. So we did buy our own uh, furniture and you know, it's relatively expensive, but it, we're also on the top floor and in one of the, like the best buildings in my opinion, in Panama City, which is uh, formerly known as the Trump, and now the name changed to uh, JW Marriott. So yeah, it's not cheap, but keep in mind, best building, also top floor, and uh, you could probably get this unit for like 18, 1700 on a lower floor with obstructed views. Uh, but uh, just in general, this is a pretty small place. It's about 150 to 153 meters square, which is about 15 or I think it's actually 1600 uh, square feet, 150 meters squared, 1600 square feet. And um, it's not that big, especially considering the rent is relatively high. But again, like I said, best building and like kind of the top floor. So uh, pay for what you get, I suppose. And um, the 
overall expenses that we have that we spend monthly i mean the groceries here are relatively similar to what you would pay in america in my opinion or canada um, maybe it's a little bit cheaper for some fruits and different things given that you know they have amazing weather here to grow food fruits right outside the city um but we'll probably for two people spend anywhere between like i don't know 600 maybe 700 dollars per month on f groceries just for us two myself and uh, nicole but um we also buy like organic stuff which is more expensive than just going to like the regular grocery store so 2.5 thousand on rent about 700 dollars on groceries which is about 3.2 thousand and then we also have a chef we pay about five six hundred dollars a month so now we're at like 3.7 a thousand and then um we have a maid who we pay about 400 dollars a month i think three or four hundred um actually no she's yeah she's about 300 so 4,000 with all that personal trainer 400 so 4,400 4,500 um on top of that you'll you know you'll go out to eat you'll go to the movies etc with everything you know it's we spend quite a bit we probably spend about six to seven thousand around seven thousand on average per month uh with all the different things that, that we may be buying. I buy a lot of books, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon, you know, expensive. Uh, Organifi juices that I, that I love to drink because they're really healthy for you and different stuff. So most people aren't living like this, but if you do want to try to maximize your performance in your business and your agency, in my opinion, it's gonna cost about that, like six to $7,000 per month. Um, now, if you don't want a chef, you don't want a maid, you don't want a personal trainer, you don't want to buy the best food, you don't want to live in like the best apartment um, on a top floor in the best building, well, I mean, you can probably live here for at least $2,000 per month, two to three, uh, no problem, okay? But it's a preference and your choice of lifestyle. So that's the cost of living, at least for us, and given my preference for lifestyle, you could say. And um, let's see what else we got here. So that's pretty much it. I would say that like stuff to do here, I mean, there's obviously many beaches, but they're far away. All the nice beaches are like an hour to two hours away. Uh, and the best beaches are, you know, seven, eight hour drive away. So hopefully this video was helpful. That is the girlfriend walking out of the room. So you'll probably hear some music, but let me know your thoughts on it. Hit the sub button if you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that'll help the algorithm. And um, hopefully this was somewhat valuable. A lot of people requested it. I, I normally don't like to make videos talking about stuff like this, but a lot of people requested it. So much love to those of you who wanted to see this. Ciao.